preview. So let us begin our time of worship together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Loving God, there is no person or power, not even death, that can stop you from loving us and always calling us into a right relationship with you and our neighbors. Sometimes we run from this extravagant love out of fear, a sense of unworthiness, of our earthly inclination to go it alone. Turn us back to you. Continue to gather us in. Show us your grace and mercy and teach us to extend that grace and mercy to others. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our songs today can be found in a link in the description of this worship video. So just go to those words in the description and you'll find a link to a Google Doc with our songs for today. Our first song, if you have one of our hymnals, it's number 613, 613, Thy Holy Wings. 613, Thy Holy Wings. Our reading today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, 
verses 1 through 9 and 31 through 35. At that very time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others who live in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years, I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? The gardener replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, then you can cut it down. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. Jesus said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way. Because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings? And you were not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O God. Our family's Volkswagen Passat diesel car has one of its dashboard warning lights on right now. This warning light has been on for a few weeks. We've been nervous about it. And so Karen called the Volkswagen service department. They told us it's a light for the particulate filter. That's how the car 
removes soot from its exhaust. So it's not an urgent need like for today or tomorrow or the day after that. But soon enough, there will be a problem. The service department told us just to keep driving it as is, just to keep going about doing what we're doing until the check engine light comes on. Then our warranty will cover it and we can bring it into the service department without any charge to ourselves. There's a warning. We know something bad is waiting down the road, but we are to keep going, knowing that afterward, there will be a better outcome with a greater benefit. Jesus was determined to keep going, determined on getting to his destination. A few chapters before our scripture reading today, Jesus had set his sights on Jerusalem and there was no looking back. It was one thing to preach the reign of God and to demonstrate the reality of God's reign when he was traveling around the countryside up in Galilee. But in Jerusalem, the religious center, the political center, the economic center, well, those who are in power and all those who benefit by not upsetting the status quo, they wouldn't take kindly to such demonstrations of another reign. And that's why some in the group who are traveling with Jesus decide to speak up, seemingly nervous about their destination in Jerusalem. They say, Jesus, Surely you've heard about the group of Galileans like us, whose blood that cruel, oppressive governor named Pilate mixed in with the temple sacrifice. We're worried we could be next. Jesus answers them in a way that might seem strange to us. Perhaps we might want Jesus to give a word of comfort to their anxiety. And perhaps our expectations of what comfort sounds like is reassurance that there's nothing to worry about, that nothing bad can happen, that nothing could possibly go wrong. Well, Jesus does answer their anxiety with the word of comfort, but he does so with a much higher standard. Because when following Jesus, bad things do happen and things do go wrong, but those things are never the end of the journey. So Jesus asks them, do you think because these Galileans who suffered at the hands of Pilate were more sinful than other Galileans? No, we're all sinners in need of God's mercy. Unless you repent, you will also perish as they have perished. Everyone gets one life to live, and every life ends in death. So what are you going to do with the gift of life God's given you? When you know what's worth dying for, then you also know what's worth living for each and every day. 
Jesus knows what is worth dying for. You. Me. And everybody sharing life together in the reign of God forever. Where death has lost its sting and nothing can separate us from God's love. And so therefore, Jesus know what's worth living for each and every day. You and me and everybody sharing life together in the reign of God today, where death has lost its sting and nothing can separate us from God's love. That's the standard of Jesus's word of comfort. At first, his answer to his followers question might seem anything but comforting to those who are anxious, worried, afraid. When he says, oh yeah, I've heard of those Galileans who suffered under Pontius Pilate. Do you think you're any different? Repent, therefore, or you will perish the same. Yet, when Jesus tells his followers to repent, he invites them to regain their focus. He shifts their mindset from worrying about worst case scenarios back to the purpose of their journey alongside him. He reminds them that the person they have seen healing the sick calming the storms, and raising the dead is the same one now leading them to where they are going. They are not alone. We are not alone. Have you had moments of being anxious? Have you found yourself worried about any of the countless things that are reasonable to worry about these days? Have you been afraid of what waits for us at the end of the road we're traveling? We are not walking this road alone. We might be walking toward trouble, but we aren't walking alone. Jesus walks with us. Repent, therefore. Focus on him. You might be seeing the warning light on the dashboard, but keep going. Something better is coming with Jesus leading the way. And then Pharisees come to Jesus, those teachers of scripture. They come to him with a warning. Jesus, turn back. Don't keep going the way you're heading. King Herod wants to kill you. Now, these teachers haven't taught Jesus anything new. Jesus knew Herod tried to kill him when he was first born. Jesus knew Herod had Jesus' cousin, John the Baptizer, killed. So in walking to Jerusalem, Jesus knew. Jesus knew why he was walking there. Herod would not have to go looking for Jesus. Rather, Jesus would be out amongst the people, proclaiming God's reign and demonstrating the reality of God's reign, out in the open for all to see. No, Jesus does not heed their warning. Jesus doesn't turn back. Jesus doesn't worry about the light on the dashboard as he continues down the road to his destination. Instead, he sends a message back to Herod. 
tell that fox that the hen is coming to the hen house to gather her brood underneath her wings. When the fox attacks, it might get the hen, but the chicks hiding under her wings will stay safe and live on. Even when most of the chicks don't know what's really happening, they don't comprehend the danger that they're in, don't understand the significance of the moment they're living. Even when the chicks scatter about and flee and run away from their mother, still the mother will not stop gathering her brood. It might not be until after the fox attacks that they finally see for themselves what their mother has done for them and then embrace her with thanksgiving. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. When you know what's worth dying for, then you know what's worth living for each and every day. Maybe today the warning light is on your dashboard. Certainly today there are plenty of things worth worrying about, reasons to be anxious or afraid. But we travel this road together with Jesus leading the way. We know there are greater things to come. We know that God brings forth life out of death. We know that God gathers those who are scattered. We know our divine mother hen, our mother Emmanuel, is God with us today and every day. In this age and in the age of resurrection, when the road that God travels ends right here in our city, in our neighborhoods, in our homes, and throughout the world. Amen. Trusting in God's presence here with us now. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Creator God, you plant gardens and tend trees so they might bear fruit that sustains life. Nourish us with your word that our lives might bear good fruit for the sake of all creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our. our prayer. Forgiving God, you call your people to repentance. Help us to see those places in our lives where you are calling us back to you, to turn from ways that contribute to injustice, inequity, oppression, poverty and exclusion, and to turn toward your welcoming, liberating, loving, healing mission. Assure us of your abundant grace and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our yeah. prayer. Mother in God, you long to care for your people as a hen fiercely protects her chicks. Guard us from all that threatens to harm us. Protect healthcare workers, teachers, and other essential workers, students, those who live in group settings, and all who are at elevated risk of contracting COVID. Comfort those who are isolated and suffering mentally, physically, emotionally, or financially. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. 
healing God. You see our needs and you remain beside us in our struggles and fears. Send your spirit upon all who need healing in body, mind, or soul, especially everyone on Unity's prayer list, including Steve, Gloria, Janine, Trudy, Neil, Rachel, and Monica. Lord, in your mercy, hear our yeah. prayer. Beloved children of God, please offer any prayers that you may have at this time, spoken aloud or in the silence of your hearts or typed into the comments of this worship video. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of resurrection, you take away the sting of death. Give us courage to boldly follow Jesus as we wait in hope for that day when we will see him coming with all the saints in the fullness of your reign. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let us join together in praying the prayer that our Lord Jesus teaches us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Just a couple of ministry messages this morning. First and foremost, uh, uh, just a repeat of, of the, our thanks for the ways you are ministering to one another um, during the pandemic, for the ways you are caring for one another through phone calls, uh, cards, checking in on one another, running errands, keeping one another company and keeping one another in your prayers. Um, Please continue this important ministry to and with one another. Please also let us know if the pandemic is affecting your household finances and your church could assist you in some way. Um, you can reach out to Pastor Kevin. His email address is in the description of this worship video. We thank you um, to those of you who are able to continue making offerings during this time. And we invite you to make an offering as part of your worship with us today. You'll find a link to do that as well in the description of this worship video. If you're someone who uses envelopes, you can also um, put those in the mail or drop them off through the slot in the door on the Oklahoma entrance at Unity's church building. Uh, second, each Wednesday in Lent, we are gathering online using Zoom for scripture reading and discussion. Uh, last week, our topic was prayer, and we had a great discussion and time of praying together. This week, our topic is healing. A link to the Zoom meeting will be sent out tomorrow via email. Also, with that link, there are some phone numbers. So if you are a person who would rather 
call into the meeting, or if that's the best way for you to join us, you will be able to uh, join us on the phone. We also invite you to join with a phone buddy, or you can receive a copy of the readings and some discussion questions in the mail to, to guide your personal devotions at home if you're unable to join us in those ways. Um, but whatever way works for you, we hope you can join us. We'll be online Wednesday at 7 p.m. Again, our songs can be found. There's a link to a Google Doc in the written description of this video. Just click on that link and you'll find our songs. If you have one of our hymnals, our sending song is number 327, 327, Through the Night of Doubt and Sorrow. And we will sing verses 1, 2, and 4. To those of you worshiping here after our live stream by watching the recorded video, thank you. Uh, we are so glad to have you worshiping with us. Our live stream service will continue with Holy Communion as Christ gathers his church together. If you would like to receive Holy Communion this week, 
please message us on Facebook or send an email to Pastor Kevin using that email address that you'll find in the description of our worship video. Um, and we will be sure to extend this meal of God's grace to you live and in person uh, over a video call over the phone. However, that however we can be together with you to share this meal. And now receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>